done with this fake dossier. It was made up, and I understand they paid a tremendous amount of money. And Hillary Clinton always denied it. The Democrats always denied it. And now only because it's going to come out in a court case, they said, yes, they did it. They admitted it. And they're embarrassed by it. But I think it's a disgrace. It's just really a very, it's a very sad, it's a very sad commentary on politics in this country. I don't think so. I think it's fine the way it is. We have actually great unity in the Republican Party. Yesterday I was, no, that's okay. Look, you know, they have to do their thing. Uh, we have great unity. If you look at what happened yesterday at the meeting, we had, I guess, virtually every senator, uh, including John McCain. We had a great conversation yesterday, John McCain and myself, about the military. I think we had a, a I, I called it a love fest. It was almost a love fest. Maybe it was a love fest. But we standing ovations. There is great unity. I mean, if you look at the Democrats with Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, that's a mess. There's great unity in the Republican Party. Well, I think it's I think it's sad, but I think to a large extent, in all due respect, I think the media causes a lot of it. Uh, fake stories are being reported. A lot of bad things are being reported that aren't true. And you know, I think to a certain extent, maybe I can blame the media. But uh, politics is a rough business. There's no question about it. I will say this: I think the Republican Party has a pretty good unity. When I look at that room yesterday at lunch. And you know, and you reported on it very well, Kristen. I mean, you you gave it a very good report. The fact is, there was tremendous unity in that room. And we're really unified. We're really unified on what we want to do. We want tax cuts for the middle class. We want tax cuts for businesses to produce jobs. There's great unity. Yeah. Well, look, hey, look. Uh, he was against me from before he ever knew me. He wrote a book about me before I ever met him, before I ever heard his name. Uh, his poll numbers in Arizona are so low that he couldn't win. And I don't blame him for leaving. I think he did the right thing for himself. But if you know, long before he ever knew me, during the campaign, even before the campaign, I mean, he came out with his horrible book. And I said, who is this guy? In fact, I remembered the first time I saw him on television, I had not really been Nobody knew me in terms of politics. But the first time I saw him on television, I said, I assume he's a Democrat. Is he a Democrat? They said, he's a Republican. I said, that's impossible. So look, his poll numbers are terrible. He's done terribly for the great people of Arizona, a state that likes Donald Trump very much, as you even you will admit. And he would have never won. In fact, even in the primary, he's way down in the primary. So he did the smart thing for himself. This way, he can get out somewhat gracefully, but, you know. Well, he's saying that. He's saying that because he has nothing else to say. But I, I do think this. I do think this. I wish him well. I really believe he's going to do the right thing for the country. He's going to vote for tax cuts because we desperately need tax cuts to put our people back to work. We need tax cuts also to be able to compete with other countries. You know what? I, I hope Bob, and I really believe that Bob Corker is going to do the right thing also. Yes, go ahead. I can't hear you. I can't what? Say it again. Well, Senator Flake did vote with me. I understand it was about 91 or even more than that. So from that standpoint, good. No, I think I'll be boosted in Arizona because he's very unpopular. I think the fact that he did it the way he did it probably, I mean, I'm very high in Arizona. I love the people. They like me. They like security at the border, you know, all of the things. But I think I'm probably helped greatly in Arizona by what happened with Senator Flake. <laughs> I don't think they do that. I really know that they want tax cuts. They know we need it. We need it for the country. We need it for the people. We need it for the middle class. We need it for jobs. 
I don't think they do that. I really don't. I know them well enough. I don't know Flake very well, but I know Bob Corker. I think they really would do it. I think they feel they have to do it for the country. Say it. I think we're going to get some Democrat votes, yeah. I do believe. I haven't started the process, but I believe that there are certain Democrats that if they don't vote for these massive tax cuts for business, for jobs, and for the middle class, they will lose their races in 18. Well, I think the press makes me more uncivil than I am. You know, people don't understand. I went to an Ivy League college. Uh, I was a nice student. I did very well. Uh, I'm a very intelligent person. I, you know, I, the fact is, I think, I really believe, I think the press uh, creates a different image of Donald Trump than the real, the real person. Well, I think it's always okay when somebody says something about you that's false. I think it's always okay to counterpunch or to fight back. I wanted to end that quickly. 401k is to me are very important, and they're important because that's one of the great benefits to the middle class. I didn't want that to go too far. That's why I ended it very quickly. But Kevin Brady, who is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, said this morning it could be on the table. Well, maybe it is, and maybe we'll use it as negotiating. But I trust, trust me, that's one of the great things. You know, there are certain elements of deals you don't want to negotiate with. 401ks, and Kevin knows it, and I think Kevin Brady is fantastic, but he knows how important 401ks are. You, you, told, you told me last week, you told me John. last week, you thought that the uranium uh, sale uh, to Russia was one of the big stories of the decade. Three congressional committees are now looking at that. We haven't heard you comment on it since those investigations were launched. Well, I think the uranium sale to Russia and the way it was done so underhanded with tremendous amounts of money being passed. I actually think that's Watergate modern age. I, I, I can't say it again, please. at it. Now, I have to say, we are decimating ISIS in the Middle East. What's happening is they'll go to parts of Africa, they'll go to other places. When they get there, we meet them. It's a dangerous business, I have to say. It's a dangerous business. So what? No, I did Not specifically. But I have generals that are great generals. These are great fighters. These are warriors. And I gave them authority to do what's right so that we win. That's the authority they have. I want to win. And we're going to win. And we're beating ISIS very badly. You look at what's happened in the Middle East. We have done more in eight months than the previous administration has done in many years. Now, what happens is you decimate them, and that's what we've done. We have decimated ISIS in the Middle East. They go to Africa. They go to places. When they get there, we meet them there. That's what goes on. It's a tough business. It's a tough war. But we are winning it, and you know what? We're going to continue winning it. With that being said, my generals and my military, they have decision-making ability. As far as the incident that we're talking about, uh, I've been seeing it just like you've been seeing it. I've been getting reports. They have to meet the enemy, and they meet them tough, and that's what happens. I was extremely nice to her. She sounds like a lovely lady. I've never seen her. I've never met her, but she sounds like a lovely lady. But I was extremely nice to her. I was extremely courteous, as I was to everyone else. You know, it's interesting. You folks have called many people that I spoke to. Everybody has said unbelievable good things about me, but you never report that. Did you report it? Did you report it? Thank you. Come. Thank you. I can only say this. I was really nice to her. I respect her. I respect her family. 
I certainly respect LaDavid, uh, he, who I, by the way, called LaDavid right from the beginning. Just so you understand, they put a chart in front, LaDavid, says LaDavid Johnson. So I call it right from the beginning. There's no hesitation. One of the great memories of all time. There was no hesitation. I think she's a fantastic woman. I was extremely nice to her, extremely respectful. Mr. President, Mr. President, you, made, you made four phone calls to four different families that day. Did you say anything different to Maisha Johnson than you did to any of the other three families? I, I would say, basically, we talk condolence. I mean, it's all about condolence. It's about warmth. In many cases, you listen, because in so many cases, one of the family families, they were saying, yes, he was a great football star. And honestly, they pour their heart out, John. It's the hardest calls. They pour their heart out. But I am always, and, and look, you people have called many people that I've spoken to, and every one of them has said, I couldn't have been nicer. Now, it's a rough time for these. It, I mean, how tough is it? There's nothing tougher. But I have such respect for those families. Nobody has more respect than I do. Nobody. <laughs> We're looking at DACA. We have to get something for it. But we are looking at DACA, and we'll see what happens. I'd love to do a DACA deal, but we have to get something very substantial for it, including the wall, including security, including a strong border. We have to be able to stop drugs from pouring into our nation. The tax plan is going to be incredible for this country. It's going to bring back jobs. It's going to cut taxes tremendously. We're going to bring back $4 trillion, I think at least, from overseas. That money is going to be put back to work in our country instead of other countries. The tax cut is going to be massive. It's going to keep companies from leaving our country. So important. Say it. Not that I know of, no. And, and I have to say, the whole Russian thing is what it's turned out to be. Uh, this was the Democrats coming up with an excuse for losing an election. It's an election that's very hard for a Democrat to lose because the Electoral College is set in such a way that it's very hard to lose that election for a Democrat. They lost it. They lost it very badly and very easily. I mean, you look at the votes. It was 306 to what, 223 or something. They lost it by a lot. They didn't know what to say, so they made up the whole Russia hoax. Now it's turning out that the hoax has turned around, and you look at what's happened with Russia, and you look at the uranium deal, and you look at the fake dossier, so that's all turned around. No, not at all. No. no. We have a very good relationship. Honestly, when you look at, when you take a look at what's happened with Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders, and the hatred, and the, the division, and the animosity, I'll tell you what, honestly, the Republicans are very, very well united. We're going to have a big meeting on opioids tomorrow. We're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a very, very important meeting uh, sometime in the very short, very near future on opioids in terms of declaring a national emergency, which gives us power to do things that you can't do right now. John, talk up, please. I'm sorry, the Fusion GPS investigation began on the Republican side of things during the primary. Do you have any idea who it was who was elected? Well, they say it began with the Republicans. I think I would know, but I won't say. It'll be determined. It'll be determined. Look, Hillary would have never announced it was them, except for this great court case that's going on where the judge was going to reveal it. So they figured, we'll do it first. They're very embarrassed by it. It's a disgrace. Yes, it might have started with the Republicans early on in the primaries. I think I would know, but let's find out who it is. I'm sure that will come out. I think I, think I would have, if, if I were to guess, I have one name in mind. It'll probably be revealed. Say it, what? Well, I'd rather not say, but you'll be surprised.
You'll be surprised.